Hey there and welcome back to Truly Cooking. In case you are wondering why I'm all excited, it's because we're making goulash today, or goulash. However you want to call it, I just know this is one of my favorite stews growing up. It's made with beef and I decided to use some short rib and beef chuck. The short rib is the flanken version which is cut across the bone and it's thinner, perfect for slow cooking. The chuck steak is a cut of beef that is a part of the chuck has a lot of marbling and connective tissue throughout the steak, making it perfect for a goulash. So stick around until the end if you want to learn how to transform these two beautiful cuts of beef into the most delicious bowl of goulash. Okay, let's not waste any more time and get into it. First, we have to pat dry both pieces of meat. I'll explain later why. Then we need to clean them, a little bit of the excess sinew and any large bones. The chuck usually has bigger bones from the shoulder. The short rib has short bones, so I'm leaving those in for some extra flavor. Pro tip, you can freeze your meat for 20 minutes before operating on it so it's easier to handle and you can cut it better into large cubes. Further, we need to make sure that all of our meat is in its place. Roughly chop all of our vegetables, starting with the mushrooms. I use a regular champignon, but any kind will work. Dice the peppers, cut open a chili and remove the seeds if you don't want it to be really hot. Smash the garlic and cut the baby potatoes in half. I'm really not worried about the order of cooking, so you can place all of your vegetables into one large bowl or one large plate. Okay, now that we are done with our prep, we can move this party over the stove. Coat a Dutch oven or a medium sized pot with some sunflower oil and put it on a medium high heat. Now we'll go a little bit old school and coat our beef with flour. This is an old French way of starting a stew, as the floured beef, when fried, will give it a nice caramelization, nice flavor, some nice body, and will start building a foundation which is also called a fond on the bottom of our pot, almost like a roux that will help thicken the sauce. Trust me, this is a step that is worth the effort. Now, the very first rule is to not overcrowd the pan, hashtag Julia Child. I'm doing exactly the opposite because I'm a little rebel and I also only have a smaller pot. Remember, you must always do as I say and not as I do, haha. <laughs> Add the remaining pieces of beef and don't touch them. Let them get a nice color. After what it seems like hours, ugh, give it a nice stir using an old school wooden spatula, duh, and make sure all the pieces get nice and caramelized. This process should take around five to 10 minutes depending on the quality of your pot. Remember, the thicker the bottom, the better. A wink wink. Look at those sexy colors, mmm. Now you can go ahead and remove the beef onto a plate or a bowl and let it rest. If the bottom of your pot is all sticky, that's perfect. Don't worry because we will deglaze it later with some wine. Make sure you leave no man behind. You can go ahead and add the mushrooms first to get some color going on them. I use champignon because they are meaty and can retain a good amount of the sauce. Also, they're very cheap and affordable. You can use any type you like. Add the remaining vegetables and give it a nice stir. The spice that makes goulash so infamous is the paprika, of course, which comes in different colors and heat levels. Go ahead and add it in. I use a regular smoked paprika. You need to add it now and cook it out a bit for a better flavor. You can smell it, it's mesmerizing. This is one of my favorite spices to ever use. Paprika is also used to give it its distinctive red color. Look at those beautiful colors, yum! You can add in the meat and give it a nice mix. This satchel of herbs is called a bouquet garni and it's comprised of thyme, bay leaf and rosemary. Originally instead of rosemary they used parsley, but for our application I thought rosemary would give the stew a very nice woody flavor. Add in the chopped tomatoes, one cup of water and the potatoes. Give it another stir and put the lid on and simmer on a low heat for approximately two hours. Resist the urge of stirring again. After two hours we can check it again and taste for seasoning. You can see the sauce has obtained a dark red brownish color and it became richer and thicker. Add salt to your taste and set aside. We need to let it rest and leave all these ingredients to get to know each other in the pot. Furthermore, we can make a small salad for garnish that will go on top of our goulash. Julienne some red onion, chop some parsley leaves and stalks and chop some radishes. Add sunflower oil and salt, mix it together and that's pretty much it, it's pretty straightforward. You can also serve it with just chopped parsley on top. 
or maybe if it's in the winter try it out with some pickled cucumbers or pickled cauliflower or even sauerkraut the options here are limitless to plate just grab a pretty bowl place a couple of ladles of love into the bowl and add the salad on top it's so delicious you won't believe how tender the meat is and how everything came out perfectly dark rich sauce tasty potatoes perfect meal for a cold winter's day However, if you're feeling nostalgic and you are missing home, grab one of those old enamel plates and dump a couple of ladles of stew in there. Then break a piece of bread, don't you dare cut it and just dig in. Like a real mountain man that finished a day of hard intensive labor. You can't go wrong with this, just look at my face. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe out there. See you next time.